Hi dear colleague and welcome to the second video about the direct composite quadrant. In the first video you could see how I prepped all the teeth and in this second video I will show you how I restore these teeth with direct composite. Let's get started. After all the teeth are aerobrated, we now start with applying the phosphoric etching. In this case, I use a 35% phosphoric acid by Ultradent. I make sure to apply it on the enamel first, since this will need a longer etching than the dentin. Then I will apply the OptiBondeval primer by Cur Dental, followed by the OptiBondeval bonding. If in this case there would have been some old composite remnants left, I also would have used a silane. I then light cure my bonding and the first thing that I do is I start with a flow ball. I use the Majesty ES Super Low Flow by Curare to make sure I create my immediate dentin sealing or bio base, which is like the first layer. What this will do, this will optimize the, ge the geometry of the prep and will also make sure that at least all the dentin is already sealed and the curing can already start. What I then do, I will restore the teeth in their natural form. So in this case, we had a really small lesion on the mesial of the second molar. So I first start with restoring that. So I know that the outside of those of that, that tooth is done. And once that's done, I can focus on the occlusal part. What I usually do is I take a look at the tooth. What's missing? Is there missing a buccal cusp, a lingual cusp? Is there missing uh, something else? Do we have a small lesion on the mesial or the distal? I will always restore that before I go back to a class one. So right now I was ready to restore the mesial side of the first molar. But what we can see is that we don't have a passive contact point. So we have two options. One option is to leave the patient with an open contact point, which in this case will be around a millimeter. Um, we can also uh, put a lot of pressure on our matrix band to deform it, but then we will get a really bad contact point. The other option that we have is first um, put a little bit of composite on the second premolar. If we make the tooth a little bit wider, just put a little bit of freehand composite, we can recreate a natural contact point. You can see the distal side of this tooth is quite flat. So I use a little bit of Shofu Beautifill 2 LS in the color A2 to reshape the distal side of the second premolar. I just make it a little bit more round following a more natural anatomy. I make sure to use my instruments to make it as smooth as possible. And I will always end with a brush. In this case, a brush by GC. And these brushes are really nice to use. You can also bend them a little bit. So this one is bent in a 45 degree angle. So it makes it a lot easier to reach the distal side of that second premolar. Now I will refit my matrix bend and we can see that we have a, a way better contact point. I place my, my wedge to make sure that it's really nicely sealed at the cervical. We place our ring. When we look from the occlusal, we see that we have a contact point. So now I can continue with restoring the mesial side of the first motor. I use a really tiny bit of flow ball as more like a snowplow technique. When I place my composite on top after, which is again the Shofu Beautifill 2 LS in color A2, it will push all the flow ball in all the small gaps and crevices that we have to make sure that we get a super nice smooth transition from the tooth to the composite. I use my instruments by LM Arte, in this case the Condensa, to shape the thickness of the mesial wall. I would like to make sure that it's approximately as thick as the thinnest part of that instrument. And then I use the LM Arte Fissura with the sharp point at a 45 degree angle to make sure that my marginal ridge curves a little bit inward. Then I use the brush to make sure that every transition is super smooth. And once that's done, I will light cure this and the mesial side of the tooth is restored. I can now continue with removing the band, the wedge, the ring, and we see that we have a really nice contact point with a nice shape. And then we can continue to the distal side of the first molar. 
Like I said in the beginning, we would always like to go back to a class one. So first restore any missing walls before we proceed to the occlusal part. I repeat the same steps with the condensa, making sure that the wall is really thin. Then we use the fissura uh, at a 45 degree angle to make sure we get a really nice and rounded marginal ridge. And then we use the brush to make sure that everything is super smooth, light cure and remove the bend. Now we are back at two simple class ones and we can just follow all the references that we have. In this case, I now start with a thin layer on the occlusal part of the tooth, just to level out the bottom of the preparation to make sure that everything is at the same level, which makes my layering a, a lot easier. I also did the same on the second molar. And usually I use a color A3 and a half for this to get a little bit more depth in my restoration. I now start with reshaping every cusp. And we do this cusp by cusp. I start on the lingual cusps of the first lower molar because we have two cusps there which are equal in width and size and length. So I could just easily divide the tooth in half if you look to a buckle and a lingual aspect and then everything that's that's on the lingual side I can just divide that also in half to create a distal lingual and a medial lingual cusp. I first place a little bit of composite in the tooth. I use the condenser to properly condense it to make sure that we don't have any air bubbles. I then use the two tips of the fissura to make sure that I get a nice shape. And again, as the last part, the brush to make sure that everything is super smooth again. Once I've done that, I can continue with the mesial buckle cusp. The mesial buckle cusp is also around 50% of the entire buckle surface. So if I restore this, I will keep some space that is left and the space that I then need to divide is for the uh, mid buckle and the distal, uh, distal buckle cusp. So right now I'm using the brush on the mesial buckle cusp and then I will continue to the next layers. I will now do the mid buckle and I will make sure that it points towards the central fissure. So it needs to slope in a little bit and then the space that is left, that will be filled up and that will form the distal buckle cusp. Again, the condensa to make sure that everything is condensed properly. We can remove any excess uh, towards the cusp tip. Then we will use the fissura to make sure that we get a really nice and sharp fissure to make sure that we get some small indentations in the cusp because it's never completely flat. There's always some minor indentations, some irregularities, the brush again, and then we can do the final layer on this tooth or the final cusp. And I do these now in, uh, I do these at the same time. So I first do the, the, part that was left on the mesial. It's like a really small triangle which connects the mesial ridge uh, together with the mesial buckle and the mesial lingual cusp. And then we do the distal uh, buckle cusp, which also like a small triangle of what's left uh, of the parts that we didn't build up in previous layers and previous cusps. Then we continue to the second molar and the second molar is often quite easy. When we look at the fissure pattern, it's more like a cross. So we have the entire tooth and every cusp is sort of the same width, the same length. So we can just divide it in force and make sure that every cusp covers around 25% of the entire occlusal surface. So it doesn't really matter with which cusps you start uh, on the second molar. Sometimes we have a more elaborate uh, fissure pattern, but that's something that you can see based on the position of the cusps of all the indentations that you have in the ridges. And then you can get a more elaborate fissure pattern, but usually making just like a simple cross for equal cusps is more than enough to get a really nicely looking restoration. The same protocol, we use the condensa to condense. We use the fissura to make the fissures to give some nice indentations and irregularities. And the final part is the brush to make sure that everything is smooth. 
And now we're already on the final layer of this tooth, the final cusp, and we always have those small triangles on the mesial and distal left, which will fill up at the last stage of this restoration. Tiny bit on the mesial, just shape it and make it in sort of a droplet form because it's usually more like a droplet than a real, than a real triangle. And then we do the same on the distal as well. This is the final result, but to give a little bit more depth to our restoration, we would like to use a tint to characterize the fissure. In this case, I used the, uh, the Color Plus uh, Brown by Cur Dental to highlight the fissure. It's always important to have a, um, have a stain or a characterization that is really runny, really flowable, because we want it to go into the deepest parts of the fissure. It will also seal if we have tiny gaps between our layers, but it will also highlight the deepest part of the restoration. If we have a material that is really thick and won't really run, it's really difficult to get it in the deepest point. I then use some clean micro brushes to remove the excess and only leave the layer that's in the, in the, in the, in the deepest part of the fissure. The final step is applying some glycerin to make sure uh, that everything is completely polymerized and then we can start with the polishing of the restoration. Here you can see the result, the polishing of the restoration. If you want to know more about that, you can have a look at the previous video because in part one, I will go over the polishing of my composite restorations. This was a really short and quick video, but I hope it gives you more insight into my workflow for direct composite restorations. If you have any questions, drop them down below and I will try to answer them as good as possible. And for now, see you in the next video. Bye.